Urus picture leaks onto internet. The Lamborghini Urus has leaked onto the internet after the car's digital image was accidentally shown on a frame of a promotional video. The frame showed the car picture on its infotainment screen, but it has since been edited so the infotainment now shows another menu, see video below. The original image revealed the car's front end design without camouflage for the first time. Lamborghini wants its new Urus to be the market's fastest and sharpest SUV when it launches this December, and it released the video to demonstrate the car's dynamic abilities. Footage of the car being driven aggressively on circuit illustrates the car's 48 volts powered active anti roll suspension technology, which is most effective when the car is set to CASA track mode. The system, which is related to the one fitted to the Bentley Bentga, the Urus uses the same platform, as does the Audi Q7, reduces body roll by applying torque to the suspension to counter lean. It works with the car's torque vectoring technology and four-wheel steering to boost agility. Lamborghini is also keen to emphasize that its high-performance SUV can be driven off-road. The brand has previously released footage of the Urus making use of its traction-boosting driveline technology on low-grip surfaces. It features a traction control system with six separate settings, Strada, Road, Sport, Casa, Track, Sabia, Sand, Terra, Dirt, and Neve, Snow. The Urus range will feature the brand's first plug-in hybrid powertrain, R&D chief Maurizio Regini confirmed. It will be the only hybrid in the Lamborghini lineup, until a Fev Hurricane arrives in 2022 and be offered alongside a twin-turbocharged 4.0-liter V8 Urus. Lamborghini has chosen not to use a naturally aspirated powertrain for its SUV, despite prioritizing atmospheric induction in its supercars, because it believes SUVs need to have huge torque. A super sports car is completely different, you need the responsiveness of the engine, to feel the spark of every cylinder, said Regini. We will keep normally aspirated engines for our other models, they are still the best choice. Lamborghini's first SUV since the LM002, 1986-1993, will be revealed on 4th of December before production begins at the brand Santa Gata Bolognese site in northern Italy. The site has recently undergone major construction work and the workforce is being expanded to prepare for an anticipated surge in demand. In the run-up to the car's reveal, Regini claimed that the Urus's design, although applied to an unfamiliar body shape, is pure Lamborghini. He said the look has evolved considerably since the 2015 concept and the finished car is much better inside and out. Regini said Lamborghini has concentrated its R&D efforts on power, weight and aerodynamics, because handling is a function of these. We want to be a leader here and have a chance to change the rules of the game, he added, alluding to new, as yet undisclosed developments that are now believed to be linked to the car's anti-roll system. Regini said he sees a strong distinction between the firm's four-wheel drive models and the growing number of rear-wheel drive variants. A modern electronic chassis control system like that of the Huracan LP582 is no substitute for the ability of four-wheel drive to transfer power to the road, he explained. Lamborghini will therefore continue to offer both driveline systems. Additional reporting by Sam Sheehan. Turbocharging will be completely mandatory for the Urus. There are alternative solutions, turbocharging doesn't have to be used. That's a Porsche badge on the front, it's a next but one generation Cayenne. What? It's the same car as the Lambo? What? And the Bentga, too? Surely, not. What, and a Touareg, and a Q7 and a Q8? Save yourself a few quid, cut some Lambo badges out and just stick them on your seat yourself. Ghastly, looks like it's already been to Danny Bahar's pimp workshop. Years ago when I was enjoying myself as a private entry in a Group N Toyota for a WRC event I was taken over to see Ricky Burns Pug which had individual water-cooled suspension on each corner. I mean that was the bee's bloody knees. Night and day chalk and cheese. They still use it with some tweaks and twerks to keep it up to date etc but this dot dot holy cow it sounds amazing and must be a seriously good steer. The only thing is, 
when Fred Bloggs trundles out his tractor down a fast country lane and you clobber it, how bloody much will it set you back for a repair slash horrifying thought? Those on the 80s slash early 90s rally car cost about 5k per corner.